Hello, hello. How are y'all doing? Hello, hello. There we go. Let's see. I think my face should appear go. right now. Let's see. Trying to figure it out. Um, I think I'm live on YouTube and Twitch. Um, for that Create Together Volume 4. Um, creative month. Amazing. Volume 4 already. Um, I don't think you guys can hear my music playing. Let me know. Um, I think I messed up my uh, audio routing. But play some music in the background and uh, you're going to hear me talk a little bit tonight. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, I see the chat here. Only hear your voice. That's, that's fine, I guess. Um, you can uh, pick your own playlist. Maybe for the best. Thanks everyone for joining uh, so far. I wanted to talk a little bit today about concepting. Um, and I have a specific reason for it. I saw in the community a bunch of people that say, hey, I'm not really a visual artist, but I'm going to take a shot at uh, creating some art to submit for the Create Together 4 compilation. And I really like that. I think um, I really enjoy seeing people just get out of their comfort zones a bit and take a shot at creating something. Um, I'm all for it. Same for visual people that are making music this time. I've been hearing that a lot. All vocal music sets. I'm one of those. Great. Well, thanks for joining. Um, yeah, I also heard a bunch of visual people saying, I'm going to try to make a track for this compilation. And I think that's exactly what this comp is all about and what this month is all about to kind of, um, yeah, cross your boundaries a little bit and try something and talk about what you're doing with other people and learn a little bit from that. Um, we can all learn from each other. I learn a lot from the community every time. A um, little disclaimer also, everything I'll be telling is just comes out of my own journey and is not necessarily, or maybe not necessarily the truth for you. Um, but it is how I experience things and uh, I would just want to give a couple tips and uh, pointers on how I approach stuff, approach creative projects. And uh, I hope you learn a little bit from that. So it is somewhat of a beginner's topic concept thing. And um, I think we should just kind of get into it a little bit. Um, let's see if we got a couple people here. Okay, great. Small. Small, cute crowd. I like that because these things make me super nervous um, <laughs> to be live on the internet. So bear with me if I click a wrong button, that will probably happen. I hope I don't accidentally stop the, the, stop the stream. It wouldn't be the first time or audio cuts out. Let me know in the chat if you have uh, any remarks or any questions and uh, any thoughts also or anything to com contribute. Um, I would love to uh, see your remarks in the chat. Thank you so much. Yeah, I am drinking a coffee. Yeah, I realize it's very late, but uh, I thought I probably need a little uh, coffee for this. So here we go. No vodka, no vodka. Thank you very much. Uh, I prepared a little presentation. Um, first, I'm going to talk a little bit about who I am. Maybe some people don't know. Um, let's see if this works. Wow, it's beautiful. Okay, I see myself on one screen. I've got dual screen setup. Can you believe that? Okay. I'm Thorwald van den Acker. A pleasure to meet you. I am co-founder of Bitbird and I am a long time creative on the San Holo project since the start where I do creative direction together with San, I always like to say, since he's such a, such a good creative himself and has a lot of visual efficiency um, that I like to work on with him. 
and together we make uh, pretty cool projects, I'd like to say. I think myself, um, pretty proud of what we've uh, done so far and um, I'm incredibly excited in the in the community that supports us as well. I'll probably say that a lot of times this stream, but uh, yeah, I appreciate y'all very much and uh, you've put us in a very beautiful position to be able to work on really cool things, projects, music, art, travels, experiences, tours, everything. I can't, uh, I can't thank you all enough uh, for that. So uh, yeah, co-founder of Bitbird and creator for Sound. We go way back, Sound and I, we've known each other since we we're around 14 years old. We met in high school and um, there we started working on music together, just so you have a little background. Um, we started working on music. We were in a band, um, a little punk band that did mostly just some pop ghost punk type covers and uh, a couple original tracks. And someone who was streaming next week on the master, uh, audio mastering side, uh, Tim Bista, he is uh, the drummer of our band uh, back in the day. So we're all kind of still together and um, working on cool projects still. Yo, I'm not in the chat. Very fun. Very fun. Now I'm more nervous. The more people I see in chat that I know uh, always makes me uh, a little stressed. But uh, I hope you're all doing good. So that was a little backstory of me and San, uh, how we got to know each other. We started working on projects together way later. Um, we kind of parted ways when we were done with high school and we both went off into our own lanes and uh, he delved deeper into the music and I wasn't fully sure what I wanted to do myself. Um, I always liked creating things, I always liked making stuff but I had no particular goal in mind. I actually wanted to study some way different things like chemistry, but for some reason I ended up on the uh, Grafisch Lyceum, which is a design school in the Netherlands, sort of practical design school, where I um, thought I could kind of get my creativity out and uh, I'm very happy I did that. I learned a bunch of tools there, like using InDesign and um, some video editing software and some rudimentary coding. Um, nothing too crazy, actually. The school was mostly focused on um, making somewhat commercial flyer type things graphic, like kind of straightforward graphic design. A large part was still focused on creating newspapers, for example. So uh, there were a lot of things that I wasn't really interested in too much, but being in an environment that um, fostered creativity made me very creative. And uh, I learned a lot of things there, mostly from my, stu uh, from my fellow classmates and doing some internships for a for PR company taught me uh, a bunch of things about working with clients. Um, I also learned a lot of things that I didn't like to do, which I think is equally important and um, maybe learned some color meanings, composition, soft skills like communication, Yosti asks in the chat. Um, funny enough, not too much of that. We did learn to kind of create concept and to make some meaning behind your project. But to be honest, it was a very high paced commercial thinking situation. So we didn't delve too much into the 
um, into the psyche of of humans and to how colors uh, affect them. Unfortunately, um, that's that's one of my uh, small let me say small regrets is that I never went to uh, to art school uh, where you learn a lot about concepting. Um, maybe even more about concepting than anything else. I don't think every art school kind of teaches you how to use certain tools, but mm, I think mostly to concept uh, and to get somewhere, of course, but uh, mostly concept and uh, some critical thinking stuff, which is something that I learned myself a bit later on in, um, in my creative process. So most of the things I'm, I talk about, they are really true, um, just experiencing stuff, um, working, failing a lot, actually, a lot of failing, making a lot of ugly stuff, uh, making a lot of concept that make no sense or are way too ambitious, um, which I think is a good thing because that challenges you, of course. Um, depending on the project uh, and what the goal of it is. But uh, yeah, we fell a lot and we ro rose, we rise, we fall. Um, that's our motto. Uh, and uh, we're still doing that and uh, we're still enjoying it as much as, uh, as we always have. Um, let me tell a little bit about my journey. I, I told you already a little bit about the school that I went to, but um, what got me started into creating stuff mostly was uh, some graffiti past that I have where I would just go out with my friends and um, make paintings on walls. Um, sometimes it was my own wall. Sometimes it was uh, other people's walls. Um, uh, yeah, just graffiti in a, in a very wide sense. I was always very much into tagging. Um, which really got me into typography and to play around with that a lot. Um, I made a lot of friends having, uh, uh, that I met on the street or, uh, or during paint sessions. Uh, and I was very uh, lucky actually to have a lot of creative friends because that really um, got us all together and kind of gave us a goal to stay off the streets. <laughs> That's a very funny thing. I always, I always really appreciate those old times because they um, were very exciting, but they also gave me some purpose to uh, pursue something other than just uh, vandalizing stuff and uh, put my creative skills to uh, a bit better use. So from graffiti, I went to painting a bunch of murals here and there. And then you have to think of kind of silly stuff like uh, doing paintings for people of, of waterfalls in their garden. And um, I remember we did a bunch of bowling alleys where we would uh, kind of paint these corny visuals of, uh, of these bowling type animations that you see. Um, I had a I had a blast doing that. I did that together with some friends um, out of my hometown, Sutemir. And from there, I kind of rolled into creating artworks. And uh, there it kind of never stopped. And I got into a lot of this thing diff or in a, into a lot of different lanes, um, like tour managing, uh, I'm, I'm snowballing now into some stuff that I've done, but uh, creating art got me in touch with a lot of artists, which got me into a lot of other things like tour managing, etc. Um, and now I'm mostly focusing back on the creative side of things, which I enjoyed the most. Um, mainly focused, as you can see, on creative strategy and show creation, which is an incredible new uh, new challenge, actually, that I've been uh, digging into together with San Holo. Um, I have a studio in my hometown with some friends. Um, back in the day, it was really a photography studio. And now we added a part music to that. Uh, San is in there, Tim Bista is in there as well. I have another friend who is a photographer. 
and we used to share the space with an animator and an illustrator as well. And I mainly focused during the time on creating videos uh, and music videos. Let me see. This is a good note, actually, to be honest. My journey started out of boredom because that's kind of what got me into the old graffiti stuff. I think it's uh, there is a lot of boredom when you're in a in a small town that has no um, possibility of really going out or partying. So we had to kind of invent it for ourselves, which was what we did. And like I said, we were lucky enough to uh, have a studio space that I, that I had with five, five friends, where we kind of build our own clubhouse, party place, creative space, and where we just started experimenting with uh, all kinds of different media. Me and my friends, since we were very young, we've always documented all the weird stuff that we've done. And um, I'm really happy with that because we all kind of took turns filming uh, what we would do through the year. And then every year, some friends would get um, the assignment to edit all that content into a movie. And then we would all come together and we would watch that movie during a specific night in the year. And uh, we just had a big party and we watched all the weird stuff that we've done in the film form. So uh, that was my intro into, into video from where we started filming way more and started filming sketches, music videos, um, you name it, anything really. This is one of my friends, Mortaza, who uh, modeled for me a lot. This is early Bitbird. And uh, I always love looking at these pictures because they are, they look really nice for what we had. And um, I'm always convinced that you don't need a lot of stuff. You just need to do some stuff. Uh, you don't need the craziest gear. You can make beautiful art using a pencil. So whatever gets you there kind of uh, gets you there. Got a little throwback of uh, Sans place. Uh, look at this, him creating music. I'd be on the couch just creating art um, with a beautiful view over our, over our town. And uh, I still love that to this day. That was quickly my journey. Uh, already forgetting, already forgetting like half of the things that I've written down. Um, I wanna talk about concept because I think it's very important and I think a lot of people kind of get stuck on it um, or not, are not sure how to form a concept. Looking back at my uh, journey, I always noticed that I didn't really believe in concepts when I started out. I thought, oh, you can just make something aesthetically pleasing, right? Um, which was the focus mainly back in the day. And that's very true, depending on your project. Everything is kind of depending on what type of project you're pursuing. Um, some things just ask for an aesthetically pleasing image. But I noticed that when I learned a lot and the possibility seemed endless, important one, I kind of got more and more confused about what I had to make. Um, I learned more skills, thus so I could make more, but by being able to make more, I felt more clouded in a way. And um, I noticed myself that my work didn't necessarily get got better because I was just trying to make a nicer image with the skills that I acquired. but it didn't necessarily become pre better projects, um, which is when I realized I really needed to have a bit more restraints for myself. Um, I needed some rules to guide me a bit better, hence me getting back into uh, concepting way more um, and thinking about projects from a bit broader perspective, not only the art, but also taking in account all the other things that um, come and look with 
a music release, for example, such as video material and promotion, and then you have the artwork, finals, etc. So that's one thing that I've learned. I learned to look at projects in a way broader sense. Um, but I really needed those constraints to guide my work into something that I was happy with. And um, it took me a little while actually to figure it out how to do it without um, frustrating myself too much. Because you might recognize you have an idea in your mind and it doesn't come out as you want. It doesn't uh, have the same quality or you just stuck in creating certain shapes or on your skill set. And having some rules set out for myself really uh, made me explore the projects in a different way, in a way more exciting way, because I could kind of test the rules as well and kind of break them and find the, find the edges of it. Um, yeah, different projects require different approaches. Um, but as we we're talking about uh, music releases mostly, I'll kind of pertain to that. I I want to show you you all something. This is very early Bitbird experiments of the Bitbird logo, um, and you can you can in my opinion totally tell that I was completely lost, which makes sense because this is really starting phase of Bitbird. But I was completely lost in what we were trying to make, and. You will see quickly also how it kind of shaped up again to become what it is logo wise. Um, so small Bitbird experiment. This is insane. If I look at this now, I, it's so cringy. But at the same time, it's kind of fun to look at, look back at this. Um, so you can already tell clearly we wanted to have a bird and something to do with some bit type shape um, hence the first experiment um, but we felt like it needed to be, be a bit more iconic like an actual icon so you can see the the weird parrot on the right definitely not what we were going for um, but fun to see it wasn't until we were digging a bit more into like pixelated looks that it all made sense of course Bitbird needed to be a bird created out of bits. And to get there itself was also a pretty long road because you can build a bird in so many different ways. But this is the one we settled on. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of files from back in the day, but I managed to uh, I managed to find some in my uh, in my photo folder from uh, from such a long time ago. Here you can here you can clearly see that using these bits resulted into into in this beautiful logo um, that I'm extremely fond of. Um, I think it's uh, one of the better things that I've made uh, in as an iconic look. Um, yeah, still very happy, and I think this is really due to. A lot of experiment until I landed on a shape that I was very happy with. Let's see. All right. Okay, bear with me. So I was thinking, how can I talk about concept the, the best? And I kind of want to take you all along into a little journey um, um, of a project that I've made with Son. Um, I wanted to do it about the new EDM project, but uh, as we're still working through a lot of stuff there and still updating and um, it's really still an ongoing thing, I felt more comfortable doing it on the previous album. So I sourced some material from the Baby You OK uh, album campaign, uh, which I'm going to tell you a bit about how we came to certain rules that we set for ourselves there. and. Um, um, what things we kept in mind to get to the desired look, which is also now I'm speaking it out 
it's always um, it's always a process. So a lot of times my concepts will somewhat to radically change during the process of creating the project. And I think especially when you're working with other people are for artists or for clients, um, you will run into that. It's inevitable because you probably need to take into account certain uh, sales goals or specific looks that they already created. And um, those things obviously shape your project a lot. All right, baby, you okay? Let's have a look. Um, the second album of Baby You Okay, uh, the second album, Baby You Okay, we had one before, album one. As you can tell, that's the first one. Um, I chose not to speak on album one, even though that's quite an iconic album, because the concept behind album one was that we kind of, that we wanted to capture as much as possible the feeling we felt while recording the album in the space where we were recording it. Um, that was in Festal Avenue in Los Angeles where we were surrounded by like beautiful palm trees. And um, we were in this little house that had a, that had a deck overlooking uh, or looking down into some hills and uh, in Echo Park. And it was very serene for us. Thus that album came out very serene with just the iconic bird and all the material that we made surrounding the, um, the release of the album was recorded in Echo Park and really um, revolved around the colorfulness and the nature uh, that we experienced there. Uh, so album two it is. We had some clear goals for album two. Um, that was to capture the vibe again of the space where we recorded it, to make it personal, um, because San was telling a bit more in that album than he perhaps was on album one or in a different way. It felt a bit more like there was more telling going on or something more to say. And we wanted to evolve it around connecting with people. Um, we felt like the world at the time was in a sort of sad space. I mean, now it's probably way worse, but that's kind of what got us into like connecting with people. Um, we didn't know like a whole pandemic was going to break out uh, after releasing this album. But um, a lot of things that I write about here also kind of uh, fell through, like sound performing with a band. Um, but anyway, I write all my ideas down. I write a lot. Writing is something I do every day. Um, most of my ideas come out of weird stories that I write down. I write down punchlines. I write down silly thoughts that I have or very complex ones. I write to get things off my chest, but I also uh, manage to just write about ideas and create these idea banks um, where I can kind of dig in. Um, it's sort of text, just story uh, mood boarding in text, um, in thoughts. And I really recommend uh, people doing that. It's a lot of fun. You learn a lot about yourself as well. And this is a little thing that I wrote before we actually really got into the project. Um, so Baby OK is an energetic post EDM album is how I how I experienced it. I wrote this after this uh, after um, sitting with San and kind of getting his thoughts on what he wanted to tell about the album. Um, it's an energetic post EDM album leaning to more towards punk. Uh, it had a bit more rougher edge, but was very uh, true to San. Um, San's vocals were very intimate on it. I think it's almost leaned towards ASMR, where he kind of sings softly, but it's quite loud in the mix. So it's almost like he's singing in your ear, really. Um, we yeah, thought it needed, because of that, it needed more face of San Holo as well. Um, and 
I wrote, yeah, I wrote some performing with band uh, that unfortunately fell through. So we didn't get to do any show creation around the band, um, but we did get to work with a bunch of collaborating artists and that was a lot of fun. Um, we were getting started on the album creation and during the recording, um, we kind of figured out that some of the goals that we set were already kind of going off track. Um, and some ideas that we had, we kind of got attached to. So we decided to add that to the equation and kind of uh, keep calculating. Yost, the question in the meantime, do you use some hardware journal book or software notion? No, I use uh, just notes on my phone. Um, I, that's where I write mostly, or I just use uh, sketchbooks and I write by hand and then I'll probably lose it at, at some point. I do have a whole stack of um, text, sketchbooks, um, paper, etc. that I try to archive in some way or digitize. Um, I would love to have one of those pens actually where you can just write and it uh, it kind of becomes digital. Um, I don't know, I, I think Moleskin has some. Um, I did get an iPad, but I, to be honest, I don't like writing on that too much. I do love sketching on my iPad. It's amazing. I have so much, so many sketches. It's, uh, it's, really, it's really a beautiful tool. Um, all right. Okay, so we started. We decided at some point the album was gonna be called Baby UK, um, which became a super important uh, rule for this album project, as you can imagine. Um, we arrived, we were very excited about that. It captures the state of the world, and um, we wanted to ask a question to people. Um, because we felt like that would give us the ability to connect with them personally. So the goals kind of shifted. The space, the capturing of the space became a little less important and we were focusing a bit more on San's personal message and to connecting with the listener um, by asking a question. Um, also, and this is steered by San. He likes very bold imagery um, and to create somewhat of an own lane for ourselves, which I'm very into as well. Um, so I wrote a bold statement within the EDM space and then between brackets also anti because we felt like the music we were creating was somewhat rebellious in a way or like anti-EDM. Um, so visually we wanted to capture that as well and come up with something that we weren't seeing as much in the space uh, during that time. Um, all right. What's more personal than handwriting? Um, as you can see, San writing here. Um, Sander writes a lot as well. San writes almost all his lyrics on paper, um, all his ideas he has, uh, which makes it super comfortable for me to um, add my writing to that and shuffle it around and come up with something uh, that we both are somewhat into. Of course, there's always some uh, persuading to do, but that's why concepting is important, because if you can explain the rules that you set out, you'll probably have a bit easier, um, easier time persuading a client, so to say it, or, or anyone with your, with your project. All right, the question was, how do we connect with people? And we had to search it into the question, baby, you okay? Um, we decided, how can we make that a rule? Let's just ask that question everywhere as much as possible. That was a very straightforward goal that we have. How can we just 
confront the world with a question, baby, okay? Um, here you have some more ideas that came out of the, um, out of the boundaries that we set a bit. Um, so we used Sans handwriting. We did a lot of performance videos because we wanted to show Sanders' face more. Um, we did an album documentary because we wanted to connect more with the people. And we love recording the recording process. Um, so we felt like that was a beautiful way of, uh, of taking people into our journey. Um, as we spent quite a long time in a house together um, recording everything. Uh, I think I was there for a month and a half or so, but I don't know how long the actual uh, process was. I think they were there for a month already. Um, we tried to get some uh, sentences in. A lot of branding a few on music projects you can also do linguistically by um, using strong language um, like the baby okay sentence but also like stay vibrant and the percentage that we were working on during the time um, that definitely went hand in hand because one of the goals was also that everything had to be vibrant now that's a very fake one right i don't know exactly what that means myself fully um, but it definitely directs me in a in a way all right ways of connecting to each other baby okay a simple question reach out to someone today um, this kind of resulted in yeah, some guidance and some wishes that we had uh, in from chat everything has an intention this may be one of my struggles i like looking at the process okay that's cool i'm happy to hear because i wasn't quite sure right what i was going to show exactly um so i'm happy that this uh hopefully is of some use um, yeah this resulted in some guidance and some wishes that we had one was clearly to just make an a nice art and single art around the project uh, a vinyl we wanted to do some postcards and some other promotional material that we thought kind of went hand in hand with uh, either asking the question baby you okay or to get a message out to people. So there were a couple of different things that we've done. Um, uh, for example, we sent out a lot of postcards to a lot of people uh, the Christmas before the album dropped. Um, I think San wrote about 500 postcards by hand, uh, which was quite insane, but it was beautifully uh, in line with uh, what we wanted to uh, achieve. We sent out thousands of stickers with the question, baby, okay, for people to put everywhere. And we made a bunch of material where we used street signage or billboards, etc., for online use, uh, where we shopped the questions or we actually did it in real life, put the question, baby, you okay, in for people to see. Um, that's just a small rundown of the project assets that were very concretely on my plate. Um, next to that, clearly all the video material, etc. Yeah, important note, as I said, this shaped while we were already recording the project um, because we kept running into re good punchlines. And as we approached the album from a writing, handwritten point of view, that meant that when we came up with some good lines, we had to kind of tie it in somewhere because everything was focused on this textual messaging. Um, so like I said, the initial goal had a bigger focus on using material of the space. This is actually quite funny because I have some old material of Baby OK album uh, that might surprise you since the final version is so radically different but um, i shot a lot of pictures and i scanned a lot of textures also in the house where we recorded and the goal was to use textures for example of wood grain 
of the house or guitars that the album got recorded on and bring that back into all the assets or all the material that we are creating, which we did. We did use a lot of textures, but all the na natural, the nature uh, photography you will see right now, we left that off the table. All right, here we go. So this is actually pictures taken on my phone and photoshopped um, in a sort of painting-esque way. Um, I believe it's a tangerine actually uh, instead of a pumpkin. Um, but these are all pictures of the garden and the house that we stayed in and then make to look uh, nicer. <laughs> uh, so this was a bit too natural as the album progressed during the recording and became a bit, um, yeah, a bit more rebellious, a bit more punky. So we shifted ourselves and uh, kind of reconfigured. Here's some other stuff that are concepts for this album, which is quite a lot, actually. I think this is half of it. And there is some really silly stuff in there, like the sad world asking the question, baby, you okay? Um, some really out there stuff as well, like using uh, pictures of the cat that always visited us, visited us or some exploration of other imagery that we thought fe felt good with the music. But we quickly learned that we were deviating a bit too much from the rules that we set out and wanted to go back into that to not um, frustrate ourselves. Um, as I said, it can be very frustrating if you can't really get to an idea. And when creating especially an album project, I think the creative struggle is to be at peace with an idea that you're creating. Because um, that's also a challenge I have a lot of times to say, okay, this is good. Um, yeah. All right. Back to the drawing board. So th that wasn't it. So we went back. I looked at some inspiration images that I uh, saved. I had a big folder during the time. This was actually a Google Drive folder where I just dumped in all these images I found that I thought were cool. Um, now I'm way more on the Pinterest to just not lose my files all the time. Uh, organization is very important and that's not something that I'm great at. So I try to use uh, use a more centralized spaces now to, um, to kind of work in. Uh, yeah, look back at the yeah pure ref, but people say pure ref, yeah, but I don't. I haven't figured it out yet. It's not great for me because there isn't the UI is invisible or something. Can't figure it out. I need a button to click on. You know, stuff cannot be invisible for me. Um, some inspiration material here. It's actually funny because you can see there's material in there that's kind of out of the box, as in. I don't necessarily would save a Greenpeace image so fast, but since we were working with bold statements and text, I thought this was uh, this was an incredible image actually, and definitely helped out with uh, yeah working within a bold style. Um, so all we need is the question, "Baby, you okay?" That's kind of how we got into it. Um, how we uh, we just at some point forced ourselves forced ourselves to create something that eventually became a final thing <laughs> but it takes some force so here's some more experiments with the baby uk text um, and they're very bad very ugly but this is all concepting stage so that's totally fine a lot of concepts i make are very sketch based and I don't get into creating the final version of it until a very late stage um, because I often keep tweaking things a bit too much. Um, 
hence me needing all these rules set out for myself. Otherwise, I will never get to a final image. scroll a bit further and you can see here we are already getting very close to the uh, final uh, artwork which you might not be familiar with but we'll see it in a second so uh, hang in there this is some test of Sanders handwriting um, while we were recording the album it uh, we wrote down all the lyrics by hand um, we wrote down all the lyrics by hand a couple times actually because we wanted to capitalize and we wanted to have it in small letters and this was a test print that I made to see kind of what textures I could play with for creating an artwork based on very straightforward typography and this actually almost is the final one here are some more color changes that we did, that we played around with. Um, before we landed on the final image, which is this artwork. Where you can see, we took in some of the rules that we set out for ourselves. Things have to be about sending a message. So we created a final that um, had envelopes in there, uh, which contained the actual discs to kind of hint at sending mail or sending messages to each other, which went hand in hand back again with the post, uh, uh, the post campaign we did where we send out so many, uh, so many postcards. This project also by putting these rules into place gave us a really nice foundation to keep building the San Holo project on. Um, even though we have a completely different style now, there's a lot of rules we've taken with us. For example, a lot of handwriting, um, but also as you can see behind San, there hangs a cloth and the cloth became a very important part in our branding as well. We use it a lot in the show now. And for the Baby OK campaign, we also used it to wrap uh, vinyls with um, and to make some limited edition uh, material. Here you can see how we pulled it also forward into uh, some larger stuff as billboards and uh, other material. Let's see where I am. I already had the create together thing. So this is my son Holo Baby OK project. Uh, let's see if I need to say anything else on it. I really wanted to show some videos, but I couldn't figure out my audio routing. So I will link some video material uh, in the Discord tomorrow and some stuff from this presentation to um, to make sure you can uh, see somewhat of the broader scope. It feels like you got way more physical stuff into the imagery. Like you could have had digital fonts post at the text in the yes, yes. But more than a constraint using f more physical media was a challenge for ourselves um, good good that you say that in chat um, because one of our goals also was to use as little computer as possible um, because we were together in a space and we wanted to be really absorbed in the creative process without getting too distracted by screens. So I had a printer scanner that I could just write stuff and like scan and print, etc. Um, so that was definitely one of the constraints there as well, that we used as a little computer as possible. Hence, it got to such a physical looking project. It's a good question, actually. 
um, yeah, beautiful. I wanted to speak also a bit about how I'm going to approach the Create Together artwork. And um, though I have some concept in place, I am not that far with the actual artwork. Uh, but I want to show you guys some constraints that I've set for myself. And maybe that inspires you to do the same thing or you already have it or you're going to shift it around a little bit. Because as I said at the start of this talk, um, I thought it was a good idea to speak on this, uh, to touch upon this topic, because I see a lot of people that are very new to creating images or creating um, visuals in, of any kind and um, setting these constraints is, uh, can help you uh, guiding your thought process. Um, so how do I approach a project like Create Together 4? Yeah, it's a good question because this is such a radically different project than, for example, a San Holo album. Um, I, there, there is no fixed set of rules that is already in place. Um, it is a compilation album, so there will be a lot of different artists that are on the project. Um, it is a community project also, so there will be a lot of people involved and how can you kind of stand out, right? Um, all these things make it just important to set some rules for yourself to work within. Um, so what do we know? This is where I start. What do we know so far? Um, all we know here is that Bitbird has a very diverse community. There's uh, photographers, musicians, visual people, people that just love listening to music. Everyone is uh, everyone is there. It's one big party, right? So we have a very diverse community. It's mostly EDM enthusiasts or uh, some fringe EDM enthusiasts. Not everyone likes the word EDM, but um, yeah, I guess that's what it is. So. Uh, EDM community and the bird needs to be there as well. Um, we have a template this year, which is the template above. And we want to get as close as possible to this template, meaning we want to keep the sh shape of the bird recognizable and we want to get to the same size of the bird as much as possible. There are some pixels that you can divert. Of course, you will never, when you create a completely different, when you have a completely different approach or you use some different media, you might not land on this exact template, but um, we want to get as close as possible to this template. Um, so what does that uh, got, me, got me thinking, right? How can I approach this? And it's a difficult one. Because for last Create Together, I was making an artwork and uh, I was pretty far in my artwork, but I just couldn't get it to the end because I didn't set these boundaries for myself. I thought, oh, this is just a free a month of free creation. And because it was a month of this free creation for me, I eventually didn't get to a, to a final image because I was just messing around and it uh, it kind of got in, in the way of finishing stuff uh, although i did end up with a nice drawing let's see all right this is what i know the bird consists of pixels but you can go all ways right so i really would um, hope that people kind of mess with the bird a bit uh, i've seen some artworks in the discord and uh, some of them really take apart the bird and make it a more abstract figure that they use to create an artwork. Some use it very just blatantly and I think you can approach it in any way you like. But I did see a lot of people who uh, 
I did notice a lot of people who maybe focus very much on oh I need to make it look nice and it's just in colors and we put some textures on it um, which definitely is an approach if you're going for an aesthetic image but I'd like to challenge everyone especially since it is a project that is about this vibrant community to make it say something uh, to give it a message in a way to uh, portray the uh, diversity of everything um, and that's an abstract challenge right it can also you can also approach that in any way you like but uh, there these rules again are important gather all the borbs yeah actually i love to have this full suite of birds this is also why we implemented a template this time because i would love to just like you got this youtube channel that i always forget the name of but there's this 3D animation guy that uh, sends out these sort of templates to the community and they all create some crazy 3D animation around that, uh, that framework that they have. And then they put it all behind each other and you have this long, long film uh, of the same scene, but in different situations or in different styles. And I really like that and I thought, it would be pretty cool if we can gather all the birds indeed, put them in a in one space and kind of flip through all these styles that everyone made. All right. Again, what do we know? This is what we knew. So my approach here, the rules I set to myself for myself is uh, use multiple shapes to create the bird. This for me really signals the diversity of the community. And here it can get a little wavy, you know, like concepting is also always a little wavy. And I know also that uh, sometimes, you know, you can create your concept after the fact, you already made your art and suddenly it makes sense why you did it. Sometimes time is not fully linear, right? You kind of discover what you did after you made it. So that's also an important note, right? Take everything I say somewhat loosely and use it as some guidance. This is not the truth. Um, so rules I set for myself to get multiple shapes to create the bird, um, to signal the diversity. I want to kind of hone in on EDM slash blur. I love the blur community. Um, I love all the how do you say that? How do you call the, the parlors that they make, um, all the bracelets that they make? Um, it's really it's really fun to me. You see it mostly in the States. It's not so much a big thing in the in the Netherlands, but uh, I always got kind of enthusiastic of the creativity that I see there. So I kind of wanted to yeah draw that back into my visual. Uh, so EDM Plur is something I wanted I want to incorporate in some way, which kind of landed me on the beats that they use. Yeah, candy. Thank you, chat. Yeah, it's definitely called candy. <laughs> You're totally right. And I have drawers full of candy from all the touring that we've done over the last uh, eight years. Um, so the bird will be the subject I need to make with the two rules I set out for myself above there. And I'm going to just stick to those two rules and try not to deviate from it too much so that I hopefully have an artwork at the end of the month. Um, there is a little bit of pros, progress that I made because I also wanted to challenge myself by using slightly different media than, than I usually do. Um, I usually work on just on, on in a 2D field. Um, I'm not great at 3D. I can I have the hang of it a little bit. Um, but I the 3D work that I make is usually still 2D, which is kind of a shame because I want to be able to use a camera and fly through stuff um, so yeah this is a very funny picture that i found that relates to the edm plur stuff um, 
or at least comes close to it and I really fancied how they set up this kind of schematic uh, blueprint of the of the object and I thought oh my god that's what I need to do with this bird how can I make a bird that is a, some of a physical object but makes sense in a 2d plane um, and then add 3d elements to it and learn something and uh, I learned some new skills this month and incorporate those elements to it while still maintaining those two rules. Um, yeah, one thing I do is make mood boards. Um, a lot of times also about very random things. Um, I make a lot of mood boards of uh, just cool stuff. I recently got obsessed by microfluidic chips. Um, I suddenly saw this image. I suddenly saw this image that is that had these beautiful sort of liquid, liquid um, channels. Um, it looked like art, and then I, I, I tried to figure out what it was, and it turned out it was med some medical. Um, medical devices that they use like to test blood with and stuff and they call it microfluids um, and uh, I got really into like searching about images um, searching images of that and seeing what all the shapes were that it could be in and how they develop it etc and that you can do it at home and then I thought oh my god this is such a cool topic how can you use microfluidics in your artworks um, but then that gets shelved kind of right because yeah what the hell do i know about microfluidics um next to that i next to that I, that i really like how it looks so i uh, i just made an image bank for it so it can be used in a project maybe in the future um, actually i'll pull up my pinterest um, real quick where I have some more examples of the beads stuff that I found that I really enjoyed looking at. And now the problem is for me, because I've set these rules for myself, work with the beads and use different shapes to uh, show the diversity in the community. Now, how am I going to turn a bit bird into an aesthetically pleasing uh, image while staying true to the beats, but I don't want to have it so flat. Um, I do want to have it a bit more 3D. Um, and yeah, it also needs to take in account these other shapes, right? So that's the challenge I set for myself. And at first I really wanted to do everything in P5.js because I have no idea about creative coding, but it is something that I'm very interested in and want, and want to learn, learn a bit more about. Um, but it's, a, it's very much out of my skill set. So I've been using some chat GPT to explain me how this works and uh, just to create some codes, kind of figure out what is possible and i've really been enjoying that uh, process also but I, I can't do it i can't get anything that looks reasonable um, out of it i've been experimenting but uh, i have <laughs> i know i'm not gonna make it work i will show you this silly this silly little code that kind of ramps up colors of oh my bad sorry i'm messing it up kind of ramps colors up on the bird and they kind of battle together elena loon in chat that's exactly how coding works you just google oh, I, I guess i'm on the good <laughs> i guess i'm on the good track then um, but this is a lot of fun to play around with and what I noticed since coding is just setting rules, 
it is also way more in that mindset of setting rules for yourself and using limitations to come to a result. And I, I really learned a lot. I've been learning a lot these last months. Um, let's go back. Let's see if uh, I have some other. I had a CT4 board as well, which is very small. But here you see a bit better what other shapes I have in mind. So this is the main image that I see. This is the beats I want to create with this, with this sort of explanation of how you need to string it all together. And then I want to use a bit more of a 3D plane to create an actual object, somewhat similar to Goldie and Finch, I would say, but not as complex not as complex um, and then I want to try to use more candy can actually candy looking candy um, I got your Pinterest now yeah that's totally fine you can follow me no problem there's nothing too crazy in there they uh, they don't allow that on Pinterest this is also such a beautiful image I can't believe it I don't know what it is I think it's just like elastic bands or something but uh i really enjoyed this this is another image i used just for the kind of the shape of the beats um so yeah that's where i'm at, that's where i'm at with this with this artwork i just set the rules out and trying to get to a result Hey, everything, people, time to steal your work. Someone says borrow, you know, everything is borrowed. It's very hard to be completely original. I would say it's impossible to be completely original in this, uh, in this world. And it's completely fine to take inspiration. Um, and also on that end, I think if you take inspiration and you set these rules, then you can create something new. I think if you take inspiration just for the sake of that inspiration, you end up creating something that might look too similar to what you get inspired by. That's also something I noticed because I'm better, I'm, I'm back into the, into the mood boarding, but there's been a very long time where I didn't want to see any inspiration images because I felt like I was just making, um, other people's work or like, yeah, remaking other people's work. And I didn't find my own voice in that. Um, but creating these sets of rules um, helped me to pick out things that I really liked from other people's work and let that inspire me to uh, create something within those, uh, within those laws. Let's see. This is the code. If y'all want, if y'all listen, if anyone out there is good at this stuff, I'd love to see some see some Bitbird as codes. I dropped this pattern in the uh, Create Together channel, visual channel, and because um, this is actually the bird, but then with all the blank spaces as a O, and on all the blocks there's an X. So this language, this is P5JS, but don't ask me too much questions about the, about the coding language because I have no idea. All right. A mitre rules as simple as they seem, give me guidance, a clear goal in mind where I try to figure out how to get there. All right, so this is my current sketch of the bird which misses all the 3D elements. And this is just placeholder elements for the, um, for the beats that you see, because I need to make this in a 3D, which will be my next big challenge. But I got like uh, 10 days to figure this out. Um, I really like the fragmented bird, and that's definitely something I'll, I'll go for. So the next challenge is uh, how to incorporate the 3D elements. Can I make it functional in a way? That's a big challenge for me too. I really like that too. Um, 
a functional, I mean, can I actually make a blueprint beat image just like this that I can tie and make a bird out of? It's a bit tricky because the bird itself is 2D and these uh, schematics are, yeah, if you tie it together, you it becomes this this 3D object, but there must be a way to make a really nice little bird out of that. So trying to figure that out. And then exactly what shapes am I going to use to signify the community with? Um, those are now my main questions on how to, how I'm gonna continue with this artwork. Um, I hope y'all were able to listen to my ranting. <laughs> if y'all have some questions, please drop them in the chat. Um, because I'm nearing the end of my uh, of my talk, uh, because this is where it stops, and I need to get to work. Uh, but I hope you all had a bit fun listening to my uh, to my journey with San Holo and uh, the journey in the creative process of Baby You Okay. I see I live here. Music is in the chat. Who was with me there in the in the Baby You Okay house? He knows exactly what we went through. This was a, a creative battle um, that we did. Um, and it was an absolute adventure. Let me tell you that. Sending all of the boosts. Thank you so much for sending me the boosts. Everyone, I sent you all a lot of boosts too. Um, set your own rules. Break them, do it again, keep setting some rules to make it easy for yourself and then you break them again. And uh, I can't wait to see what y'all do. Um, I can't wait to see what all the artworks that get submitted. I've seen a couple. I like it. Um, I will, if, if y'all want, I can do a bit of a feedback session maybe in the Discord this week too. Um, we can chat about that, no rush. Um, although there is a bit of rush because it's already November 19th. And that means that uh, the end of the Create Together 4 month is upon us. Um, I heard some music as well. May uh, maybe some of y'all watched the Tales uh, feedback stream last night, which had some insane tracks in there. Um, I tried to watch all these six hours, but I uh, fell asleep for at least an hour, unfortunately. But damn, that was crazy. Don't remind me. Yeah, sorry about that. Time to get to work. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for tuning in. And if you like, I can do one of these talks either here or in discord itself about the new San Holo project, the EDM project, because there's a lot of interesting things there to talk about actually, how we used some of these rules we set out here to take into the new project and how we challenged ourselves to use some, uh, some tech like depth mapping to create visuals. Um, I created a very specific sort of process, creative process to get to the, uh, to get to the show visuals on that project, which I would love to show you, to show you all sometime soon. Um, so that's cool. All right, y'all. Any questions? I'll hang in for another minute or so before I, uh, gonna head to bed soon. How do y'all feel about what you've made so far for Create Together? Is everyone a bit excited or any collapse going on? Very not satisfied yet. No, I feel you, Sven. I feel you. It's tricky, huh? But that's also what it is, huh? It's just tricky. 
Don't you think text is a very restrictive limitation for art from question from chat? Uh, no. No. Because you can make a lot of text, different type of texts. I mean, it is definitely a restrictive li limitation, sure. But within that, you can find an entire world. Yeah, typography is very difficult. It's it's very specific thing. Some people are really amazing at typography, some less. I feel like I'm a lazy in typography, um, in a way, when it comes to typed typography. But I'm very um, into just handwritten typography. I think it's due to the graffiti background, but uh, yeah. I don't find it such a crazy limitation for myself to uh, to use text. Maybe you should look at some more typography inspiration and out of the box ways to approach text. We can spar on that a little bit if you like. Scrolling to the chat. I recently watched a video on 40 fractals spinning stuff. And that's very cool stuff. Fractals, dope. I try to really have the text be part of our artwork. I appreciate that, actually. I like that. It's fun also. It's a fun challenge to not just paste it on there. Although sometimes that's just the the choice as well, right? The nothing against that. If it fits nicely, it fits nicely. If it does what it needs to do, that's totally cool, of course. Um, but if you can tie it into it, that's very cool. I like that a lot. Just as a challenge for yourself. I'm also very curious about y'all's approach to these things. Um, and I hope you all share a bit of that in the Bitbird Discord channel. Because um, I am, uh, yeah, I'm always interested in seeing other people's approaches and um, learn. I, I learn a lot every day. I think that's it, y'all. I see no more questions coming in. The rule with the Bitbird in the center really threw me off this year. Yes, I agree. I agree. Same. But I think that's the fun part. I think that's the challenge. Um, and I think it's fun to just have this rule in which everyone can show how they approach it differently. So yeah, I agree with that. We have a template this year kind of throws off um, some ideas you probably had in your mind before you got started on it. Um, but yeah, let that drive you to create something that you thought you maybe couldn't or anything. Um, just reading some, just reading some chat now for people that think, who are you talking to? JB says, nervous. Are you nervous? Are you submitting a track? God, there's such good music this time around again. It's uh or at least what I heard yesterday, it's, it's crazy. I did a few game jams where you have a team to create stuff. I feel like having restrictions is very cozy. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that too. Back in the day also, how I started out was I used to Photoshop because I thought Photoshop was very cool. And I like pirated Photoshop when I was like 12 years old and I got really into uh, photo manipulation 
because I've watched a lot of CSI and I thought it was always so sick when in CSI they would zoom in and kind of like zoom on the license plates and stuff. <laughs> and then they had this super unrealistic uh, uh, magnification of a license plate that made no sense. So I thought, whoa, that's so sick. Can you actually do that? And then I just tried to do as much as photo manipulation as possible. And then I did all these contests where um, they had the themes or rules, for example, Photoshop a boat in a desert. It's as simple as that, you know, and then I would uh, just spend days on making an ultra realistic image of a boat laying in a desert. And uh, I really like in these in this com competitive, somewhat competitive settings to have these super strict rules and themes to uh, hold on to and to uh, make it somewhat of a battle. Yeah, pirating is a is a crime. Yeah, but when you're twelve, you're not gonna pay like four hundred bucks for software, right? I mean, yeah. All right, y'all. Thank you all very much. I see no more questions. Um, thanks for sticking in there with me and. Uh, to listening to another rant with Thor. Um, I hope to speak to you all soon and I will use learn some more Blender and I'll learn some more P5JS and I hope to uh, share some more beautiful work with you all soon. All right, I'm going to call it a day. You all have a great night or day wherever you are and I'll speak to you all in Discord tomorrow. Thank you very much. Bye.